Welcome guys. In this video tutorial we'll be talking about silver staining. Silver staining is one of the important, very very important and sensitive staining method which is developed to get the band after the protein separation using SDS page, right? So if we get the big picture clear that we extract the protein extracted protein uh, is taken now we run the SDS page or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis okay after that what we get a band so if, if this is the gel what we get we get a band let's say band like that let's say this kind of band we get a band like that band pattern Okay, but the band we usually get, we need to visualize them, right? How can we know where protein is really? So for visualization of this band, we can use the gel staining method, right? So the gel staining method. Now usually, the gel staining method for conventional purposes, uh, we use Kumasi blue. Kumasi blue or Kumasi brilliant blue solution. We add this Kumasi blue and we uh, keep this gel overnight. Then we come and rinse it two or three times. Then we get visualization of this dark bands, beautiful blue colored bands. Okay, it will provide us, as the name suggests, it will give us the blue staining. Right? But this Kumasi blue is uh, not very much sensitive because if we, we get many proteins here. So there are suppose some proteins are they are present in very very small quantity suppose in nanograms for example a protein present here in say 15 nanogram this protein which present in this mixture in 15 nanogram cannot be detected using Kumasi blue Kumasi blue will fail to detect this very tiny amount of, of the protein so protein band is there so protein is there but band is not shown due to the non-staining of the Kumasi blue, due to the uh, less sensitivity of the Kumasi blue. Sometimes we get bands which are very very faint. That means the concentration of the protein into the mixture is very less. Right? To visualize those kind of faint bands, those kind of small amount of protein bands, we need to rely on another technique called silver staining. So the advantage of silver staining that is, it is very sensitive. even it can detect even 10 nanogram of protein so it can identify and detect 10 nanogram of protein at least up to 10 nanogram of protein okay now if you need to have much more understanding or much more sensitivity we must rely on Western blotting. Now, Western blotting can detect up to two to three nanogram of protein sequence, uh, protein percentage. Okay, or less than two nanogram of protein. Okay. Anyways, now in this case, in the silver staining technique is better than this conventional Kumasi blue staining. Okay. Now, what we do using silver staining, the basic principle of the silver staining is that now in all this case, what we got, we get a gel band in our hand we get a gel in our hand okay now in this gel we are having we, we have run uh, so let me draw this gel somewhere there so, so let's say say this is the gel we get our gel and there are proteins but we don't know where the proteins are actually present right we need to stain to visualize the presence of the protein now for this staining this, this this silver staining as the term suggests silver it utilizes silver as the depositor to denote the presence of the proteins right because the proteins that are present here so the principle is proteins are present they are made up with amino acid sequences now the amino acids are having their side chains we all know that right side chains means the R group of amino acid now this silver staining utilizes the stain as silver nitrate or silver acetate whatever we can take any of them silver nitrate or silver acetate right now whatever we take as silver nitrate or uh, silver 
acid uh, silver nitrate and silver amine i guess not acetate silver nitrate or silver amine whatever stain we get we are having silver in it right so whether silver nitrate or silver sorry it should be silver amine whatever uh, is there the silver amine is a, a positive type of staining silver nitrate is a negative type of stain so whatever silver nitrate or silver amine the major component of this stain is this silver right so the silver what can do now the silver nitrate or silver amine when they interact with the side chain of the proteins that are present in this gel they will reduce this silver into metallic silver or free silver so as the silver nitrate or silver amine is reduced it will form metallic silver which will be deposited onto the protein content so it deposits deposition is done now suppose here it is the protein for example let's say here it is the part where the protein is present for example now due to this addition of the stain the silver nitrate or say let's say silver nitrate we take silver nitrate the silver nitrate acts with the side chain of the protein that are present here and due to this interaction silver nitrate is getting reduced and the reduced silver as a metallic free silver deposited onto this region as a result of deposition we can visualize this deposition there's a dark deposition band we can get and this dark band is obtained due to the presence of free silver deposit right so we get it due to the presence of free silver deposit so we get this kind of bands so now we can visualize this band and this is very very sensitive even uh, 10 12 nanogram of protein can be detected using this kind of technique because this is very sensitive this reduction is very very quick and accurate okay and another important thing the rest of the gel remember so there is a question that the silver nitrate it cannot be uh, can it be reduced in rest of the gels except for proteins the answer is no not at all because the reduction of silver can only be achieved when it is reacting with the side chain of a protein now suppose there is a protein say there is a protein there is a protein there is a protein there is a protein except for that rest of the regions are protein free right so these regions will not bind with silver nitrate and will not reduce silver into the free metallic silver so we won't find deposit in these regions we only find deposit in these regions where they are interacting with proteins but again another important thing due to some protein migration because the protein migrates through this gel there are some trace of proteins in this region some trace so that's why we get some deposition of silver scatteredly in this case but these are not that dark the small dots small scattering this small scattered silver deposition throughout this gel is called the background noise right so we need to reduce this noise because this is not the right indication of proteins we can actually visualize it because the protein bands if they are present that is given by a dark band but this background noise is very faint very less right now if we use silver amine which is a positive charge positively a uh, charged uh, dye if you use this one uh, not dye it's a stain if you use this stain this stain is having a less sensitivity because this this stain is having a slight higher, higher background noise but on the other hand silver nitrate is having less background noise that makes the silver nitrate as a better stain than the silver amine okay so usually most of the uh, nowadays most of the cases we use silver nitrate for the staining of this gel okay so this is the basic process of the staining so we take the gel out we what we do we add this solution and we rinse it then we fix it develop it and we get our desired part okay so this is the process of silver staining uh, so let me write the step by step process of silver staining which is also i won't recommend you to memorize but this is the basic principle you must know now the process is something like that so we take so we take this proteins out but before staining it with silver nitrate solution we must have cross link the structure right now cross link what cross link 
so first important step is the cross linking of this amino acid sequences so cross linking of lysine residues actually because I wrote here that silver nitrate acts with the side chain but usually it acts with the lysine side chain most of the cases so what we need to do we need to cross link all the positively charged side chains of lysine so cross linking is done okay using cross linking agent and for this cross linking we take glutaryl dehyde or formaldehyde okay these are the cross linking agents we utilize it to cross link them after this step we need to rinse it alcohol this is not all the steps are important but simple rinsing it with alcohol then the third step is to addition of silver nitrate so silver nitrate is added there right so this is called the staining so let me write it there in this way staining 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 with silver nitrate or silver amine whatever according to your choice and silver nitrate is used along with sodium uh, carbonate also can be used in this case uh, in the combination okay after the staining what we need to do we need to put it for some while so 15 to 20 minutes is like that then what we need to do we need to develop it right so staining is not uh, enough we need to develop the solution for the development what we require the common development agent that we utilize for the development of films which is called sodium thiosulfate so development is there using sodium thiosulfate as a development solution so now uh, after that we need to terminate the situation using termination using acetic acid solution as well as we put this uh, so sodium acetate and all these solutions and final step is the drying using alcohol so these are uh, basically the step by step process of how we use this first is the cross linking stage of lysines using uh, glutaraldehyde or formaldehyde then the rinsing with alcohol and staining with silver nitrate but oh remember i forgot to mention before staining we need to sensitize it right we need to sensitize our uh, gel sensitization is important Sens sensitization is achieved using the treatment of sodium thiosulfate solution again then we use the development then we use the termination of the reaction and then finally we'll dry this solution okay we'll dry this gel after the drying of the gel this gel is ready so we can take this gel and we can take pictures and we can measure the presence of these proteins but another important concept once we deposit this uh, silver onto these proteins and the, we obtain the gel we cannot uh, do further with this kind of gels because this gel we need to discard because rest of the part uh, leaving this uh, silver out of this protein and uh, getting the protein back is extremely tedious task so that is a disadvantage of silver staining because you cannot take this kind of proteins now suppose you need to run the gel you need to separate proteins and then you need to take these proteins for mass spectrometric analysis you cannot do it if you stain this gel using silver staining you cannot achieve it so if you uh, are trying to uh, analyze your protein using mass spec or ms analysis you must not go for the silver staining you can go for silver staining in another gel which is totally after silver staining can be degraded okay so this is the whole process of how it is obtained and i hope this is helpful thank you